Hey guys, Doug Wolf with Wolf's Den Forge. Welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to build a coal forge. I just need something light, something that I can take apart in very small pieces and stash in all the tiny little cubby holes and hidey holes in my truck, and one that will fit the really, really thick, huge, heavy um, fire pot that I got from Laurel Machine and Foundry when I passed through there. If you saw my on-the-road vlog post where we dropped in, that's where I got it from. And I bought one of the extra, extra thick ones for um, using either coke, which I plan on moving over from coal into coke in the future. And uh, also it's very good for doing a lot of high heat operations. I do a lot of really, really hot forge welding. So I got the thickest fire pot I could get. Um, of course, the net effect of this is that fire pot is really, really heavy. So the forge table itself needs to be as light as I can get it, but still stiff and sturdy enough to hold up this somewhere in the neighborhood of 70, 80 pound fire pot and tweer assembly that I have. So um, we'll scrounge around a little bit in the junkyard, see what we can find, and we'll slap some together, and I'll show you how I go about this. Okay, so this is what I'm making the new coal forge out of. This is actually an old uh, sheet metal basin of a coal forge that was put in the shop here that I'm salvaging. So I'm chopping this down so that once I cut this out over here and fold the sides up to be about two inches tall, this is going to be 18 by 24 inches. It's going to fit this fire pot that I got from Laurel Machine and Foundry. So it's just a pan. I'm chopping off all the extra. That's, you know, the quarter angle and all this tube and everything that's on here, cutting all of that off. I'm gonna build an entirely new frame that's dis that I can disassemble completely for this for traveling. So the first step is you can see that I have chalk marker lines all the way around here and some of it's already cut is to chop off all the excess and then cut this hole so it fits and with the magic of time lapse I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll show you the next step. All right there's the sides cut off the hole enlarged to fit the fire pot and the white lines there are the bend lines to where I'm going to bend up the sides so they're just as high as this. Then, we're going to add a little bit of reinforcing and legs. Alright, kind of missed a little bit of the time lapse here, but I've got the center hole has been opened up now to accommodate the fire pot, which you can see. This is an extra thick fire pot meant for coke or serious heavy duty forge welding, so this is a very, very heavy fire pot. <clears throat> Down here, the tweer, clinker, clinker breaker and all that has already been installed. And the way I built this the actual pan section right here was already existing in a different forge, but it was considerably wider. So I chopped off everything I didn't need, narrowed it down, bent the sides up in a sheet metal bender, which is why these sides are bent nice and square, and these are kind of janky because that's whoever originally bent up these sides did it with a hammer. So they're kind of wavy and uneven, has hammer marks in it with these are nice and square there from the sheet metal break. And the way I've set this up is I've made it so I can have three legs on it, which is self-leveling on uneven terrain, which I happen to, I'm going to be using this on uneven terrain quite a bit, or I can have four legs on it, which I have four legs made for it, an extra one sitting over there somewhere. And this is really all there is to it. I'm gonna, I am going to do a little bit of bracing for the legs, and I may wire brush it on the outside and give it a coat of paint so it's all even looking. But other than that, that's really all there is to making a coal forge. Now, granted, I bought the fire pot and the tweer and all that for this one. Whereas, if you had to fabricate one, it'd be a little bit extra work, but it's really not that difficult. There's one in the back in the, in the junkyard, which I'll dig out here in a minute and show you, which, is made, which was the one that was actually in this pan that was made of 3 8 plate. So the advantage of having friends like my buddy Ed that never throw things out, and is generally a pack rat, is this is the old fire pot for the old forge that I cannibalized to make this one out of that used to sit over there in that corner of the shop. If you can see where that pipe comes through the wall there, it used to sit down there. <laughs> and this is all just fabricated out of, I don't even think this is 3 8 I think this is like quarter inch plate here. There's another one that's out there that's 3 8 plate. This is just quarter inch plate, you know, made into a pan with a deeper one right here. There's the inlet for the tweer, the bottom where the ash dump 
gate goes on it, which is long gone. And this one doesn't have a clinker breaker. It just has a simple grate. And honestly, you can get away with a grate easily on a coal forge once you learn how to stick your coal rake down in there and clean out the, the clinkers. It's not that big of a deal. I actually really don't find having a triangular clinker breaker like this one that's in here to be really that big of an advantage. So they are kind of nice though once in a while, but really for the most part, you can get away with this. I worked on a coal forge that had nothing but a simple grate in the bottom of it for I put hundreds of hours in that coal forge and never had a problem. But anyway, so this is kind of what, you know, this is really all it takes to make a, a coal forge. It's very, very simple, actually, if you have basic fabrication skills, which, again, you know, I've talked about many times. If you don't have simple basic fabrication skills, simple welding skills, go take a class and learn how. It's well worth it. Okay, now that I've gotten this far, the next step is to build a stand for this fantastic Champion 400 12-inch blower that I scored in Maryland. And I scored this from the same guy that I bought my 165-pound Trenton, 165 Trenton anvil from several years ago. So it was kind of interesting that I happened to find the same dude on Craigslist selling this one. So this blower is in fantastic condition. Runs very, very well. It's been very well taken care of. The only thing it's missing is obviously it doesn't have the stand and the handle is gone so I'll forge a new handle and fabricate a stand for this one. Okay, although I can pull the fire pot and the twir and reorient them in any direction I want, you can see that I have the inlet of the twir on this side if I'm standing at the forge working this way. The reason for this being, I want my blower to be on my left hand side. The reason for that is if I'm over here working on the forge, swinging a hammer with my, you know, rock, working on the anvil, swinging a hammer with my right hand. When I turn around to go back to the forge and put a piece of metal in there, the last thing I want to be doing is sitting here with my right arm, cranking things with my hammer arm. I want my hammer arm to relax and, you know, rest up while I'm cranking my blower. Although this is the, probably the most least effort blower that you could possibly use. Just a small, you know, circular motion like this produces an incredible amount of air with a blower of this size. Still, I don't, you know, if, after I've been working, especially if I'm forging large pieces, which is mostly what I do in a coal forge, large, heavy pieces of iron, I want to be able to rest in between, in between heats, not sit here and crank a freaking blower with my hammer arm. So it's going to be set up over here. <clears throat> I wanted to show this one really quick. This is, this is a coal forge that my gas forge and all this crap is sitting on top of. And here's a blower for it right here. And the way this one is set up and oriented, uh oh, I'm just going to wreck the house really quick. The way this one is set up and oriented, once I put my, my work into this, I have to sit here and crank with my right hand. Unless I'm going to come all the way over. I'm just hell bent on this. Unless I want to come all the way over here and crank with this hand standing this way to the forge. I mean, which I can do, but it's just inconvenient. If I'm sitting here working in the forge and I want to pay very close attention to my heat and my colors and stuff like that, my only real option is to sit over here and crank with my hammer hand, which is exactly what I don't want to be doing. I want to be cranking with my off hand. Here it is with the fire pot installed, the twir installed, a handle welded onto the clinker breaker, and I've got. 3 8 round bar welded on the side here and on the other side there for hanging up tools and such. And I threw a coat of paint on it. So there it is, quick and easy. And over here is the stand, the clamp, which is painted in orange right now, <clears throat> for my Champion 400 and a new handle that I fabricated for it because the original handle was missing. I do need to make a weight that goes right down here to counteract the weight up here so that way when you when you spin it a good deal and let it go it keeps going considerably further but other than that that's all put together and painted and that was just a very quick project this is let's see this right here woohoo that is schedule 80 pipe there's crap load of that laying out in the junkyard out here and this is just some random tubing I found this is leftover one inch by one inch angle iron that I had from a different project this the handle here is, I think, 3 eighths by 3 quarter um, bar stock that I had laying around, like crap loads of it. And then the little handle section right there is just half inch round stock. And that's really it. Quick, dirty, but solid. Yeah. So one thing I did want to show, how I made this clamp, is actually five pieces of 
uh, two different sizes of angle iron, right? There's one very large chunk of angle iron here, two smaller pieces well down there, and those grab onto these little ribs that are right, oops, right here and right here on the inside. You can't really see them, I'll pull it on in a second, so you can. And that just allows this to slide in, and it holds fairly tight. And this is sitting on top of two more pieces of angle iron here that create a cradle for that section that's welded onto the top of a tube that sits inside of here. So if I want to, I can grab this entire assembly and just pick it up and pull it out without having to slide the blower out. You can't really see it in the light with this light, but there's rib right here cast on both sides that goes all the way across here, and that's what's captured inside of that that's uh, angle iron. So that's it. This blower's in really excellent condition and it runs very well. I just need to make weight for the side and maybe possibly give her a good scrub down on a fresh coat of paint. Maybe. We'll see. So that's all there really is to this forge build business. Not a whole lot to it. Took a salvaged uh, forge pan out of something else, cut it down, bent it up, threw some legs on it, put a big enough hole in it, and uh, painted it up. And just just big enough to fit my fire pot and my twir. So that's really it. I just needed something light that I can take apart that will be lightweight. It will come apart in the smallest pieces possible to travel with. So that's it. Thanks for joining me, guys. If you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to ask. And uh, have a great day.